David Gloniger with the state newspaper. Uh, Jewel, um, South Carolina's obviously been looking at how to defend you. Have you been looking at how they might try to defend you and who are the best defenders on that team? Yeah, um, you know, we worked on overplaying. We worked on a lot of different other strategies as well. And, um, you know, we know that Tiffany Mitchell is one of their, you know, better defenders, and she might be guarding me, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, we're just working on a lot of things. Question right in here. How similar and different are you and Tiffany, you and Tiffany as players? Do you get a lot of comparisons between the two of you? Just how similar and how different are you? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're both have the same mindset of attacking. Uh, you know, we're patient, um, you know, pretty good athletes. So people compare us, uh, you know, pretty similar alike, but, you know, we're at the same time kind of different as well, so. Anything else for the student athletes? Yeah, go ahead. Antonia English with the Tampa Bay Times. For both players, could you just talk about um, – had the having the experience of having been before and, and, and how you think that may factor in in terms of, of a team that's never been to the Final Four before? Um, yeah, I think that experience really counts for a lot, being in the Final Four, because there's so many stuff you have to do like off the court and there's different distractions. But I think overall, it's just going to be a lot of fun for all the teams that are here. This is for the students. I'm John Finneran from the South Bend Tribune. Uh, Lindsay and Jewel, address the uh, – what you have seen of the South Carolina team, if they remind you of anybody that you've played before this season, what kind of, you know, matchup or difficulties do you, you know, see in playing this team? I think they remind me a lot of uh, Tennessee, just also being an SEC school. Um, they're very physical. They have great posts, and they play really physical uh, defense. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with that. They're definitely physical. They, you know, they follow their game plan really well, and they play, they play hard. They're fighters. Question right here. Uh, Philip Hirsch of the Chicago Tribune for Lindsay. You were pretty much lights out the last two games. Did you wish that you could have been playing two, the Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday too? The way though, and what what kind of got you on that role? Um, I think just our game plan those uh, those two games. Um, the post set really great screens for us, and we got those free throw line jumpers that we really worked on in practice. So just having that confidence um, and just having your teammates really trusting you and instilling that confidence in you. Question here in front. Um, for either of you, some say that you know just being have, having Final Four experience counts for a lot. Do you think that will play an advantage since this is South Carolina's first trip? Do you want to take that, Jewel? I just think that you know experience really helps. You know we understand possession basketball, and um, you know your both teams are here to try to win. So it's you know you got to find it's going to be a competitive game. And that's what you want in women's basketball. Right here. Jewel, if you and Tiffany are matched up against one another, does the competitor in, competitor in you almost kind of want that? <laughs> well, you want good basketball. You know, you want good competition all, all the way around, and so you want the challenge, and it's awesome. And we, we talked off the, on the court as well, and we were excited to play against each other. Anything else for the student-athletes? I'm sorry, we have one in the back for a junior journalism workshop. Growing up, did you guys ever expect to be here? <laughs> um, growing up, it was always a dream of mine, um, playing for the Final Four and playing on the biggest stage uh, against some of the, the greatest players who ever played the game. So, yeah, that was really a goal of mine uh, growing up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this is something that you dream about growing up as a kid, just playing under the big lights and playing with great teammates and great coaches. So it's, it's, been, it's been awesome. Anything else for the student-athletes? We'll take one more from the back. Yeah. You're so cute. Right there in front. What are one of the uh, biggest challenges that you have endured being a basketball player? Jewel, do you want to take that first? <laughs> I think, um, you know, probably just time management, understanding that, you know, you still are a student athlete, so a student comes first, and so understanding just how to manage your time. Yeah, I would have to say just balancing school and then basketball. Um, obviously, you have to do both, and it's hard to balance that at times, but you have to get it done. Okay, this time we're going to dismiss our student-athletes back to the locker room. They'll be available until the locker room closes at 10.50, and we'll continue with questions for head coach Muffet McGraw. We'll start right down here in the blue. 
uh, David Kloniger with the state newspaper. Same question, Muffet. How do you see Tiffany Mitchell or some of USC's other defenders matching up with Jewel? Well, they've got a lot of choices. Uh, I think that's the strength of their team is that they have so many great guards with terrific defensive ability in terms of their just athletic ability. So I think they could probably keep a fresh body on her uh, throughout the game without really losing a lot, even when they go to the bench. So uh, I think um, I think they've got some really strong defenders. Philip? Hi, Philip Hershley, Chicago Tribune. Muffet, I have two very unrelated questions. One, after a spectacular regular season, Jules struggled a little bit in the playoffs, uh, I mean, the tournament. What have you said to her about just hanging in there and not trying to force it because she was doing a little bit of that? And the other question is about, you saw her way earlier in the season, but just talk about what Morgan Tuck has added to Connecticut, a healthy Morgan Tuck. I would say in terms of Jewel that when you look at her numbers, I would have been thrilled if anybody else on our team had those numbers. Uh, I think that she has been so spectacular all year long that we expect a superstar every single game. And I think the beauty of, of us being here and our team, what got us here, is the rest of the team. I, I think that what Jewel does, when she's on the floor, she draws so much attention from the other team. And their whole defense is designed to stop her. So it allows the rest of the team to step up. And the thing that allows that the most, I think, is Jewel, because she passes the ball so much. She's so happy when the other, team, uh, the other teammates score. And I think that she's that kind of team member that really kind of empowers the rest of the team to, hey, step up. I believe in you. You can step up and, and uh, help us win also. And I think she's, uh, she's very comfortable having other people contribute. But I think she is also ready for a big game. And Question. as far as Morgan Tuck, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I think that it's a shame that the media decides who's going to be the best players at the beginning of the year because I thought from our game, uh, at least in December, she was the best player on their team in that game, uh, so probably their second, their second best player. Uh, I don't think she's got near the attention that she deserves. I think she's had a fantastic year. And she is a big reason for their success. And uh, for some reason, she's not getting any attention from the media. Question down here. Muffet, uh, how important is it for uh, women's basketball that someone other than Connecticut win this weekend and in, in championships down the road? I thought this was a great year for women's basketball in terms of the parity of the tournament. We had a number of upsets. We had a lot of close games throughout the tournament into the regionals. Uh, you saw North Carolina and Florida State uh, almost beating South Carolina to, to get here. We had a really tough game with Baylor to get here. Maryland had a tough game with Tennessee to get here. So I don't think it was, even though all four number one seeds are here, and only for the third time in the history of the tournament, uh, I think that there's a lot of parity and it's getting better every year. Um, I think we've got the best four teams here now. And you know I think what everybody's hoping for are good games, at least competitive games. Down here. Muffet John Finneran from the South Bend Tribune. Could you talk about the concerns you might have for uh, South Carolina and its front court and what kind of uh, challenge you think that's going to give to your front court? Well, I have a lot of concerns about South Carolina. They're such a good team, and their depth is just uh, probably the best in, in the game, actually. I think they have the most depth of any team here. They have great post players on the bench uh, and in the starting lineup. You can't think about, we'll have to get them in foul trouble, or maybe we could do this or that, because the people they're bringing in are, are good or better than, uh, than the ones that are starting. So I, I think they present a lot of trouble for us at both ends of the floor. Defensively, you got Coates is a great shot blocker. Uh, she's just got such a big body. We haven't really seen a post player with her size and ability all season long. So I think it's going to be a little different for us to see uh, the strength of their posts um, in this game. Question right here. Muffet, Gene Sapica from the Charleston Post and Courier. Uh, elaborating on that parity question, with a lot of the same programs at the top, how hard is it for a school like South Carolina to establish a Final Four caliber program? Well, I think you're starting with a great coach, and that does make things a little bit easier. She's got a tremendous reputation in the game, and she does a great job. So I think, I think that helps. But I think it's difficult. I think the thing that really helps you is when you have great in-state talent. That, that is probably the, the thing that can really get you going, because when you have local players who want to stay close to home to play and have their families watch them, it makes it easier to recruit them. So I think that they were fortunate that there's so much talent in the state of South Carolina. And then when you start to win, 
that attracts more good players. I think good players want to play with good players. So I think it's it's really, really been flourishing for Don. Question here. Carol, Charles, the post and career. Uh, Muffet, Tiffany Mitchell gets so much attention for her offense. What have you seen from her on film in terms of a defender, especially how well she's able to defend late in games when she's extending herself on the offensive end as well? It's funny. We were talking. She and Jewel are, are so similar in that way that they both guard the other team's best player. And we asked so much of, of Jewel and, and I'm sure of Tiffany as well. Uh, you've got to perform at the off, at the offensive end, but then you've got to shut down somebody. And then, of course, you better rebound and uh, do some other things in between. So I think to have a, the best player be the best defender, it just says a lot for Tiffany and her mindset. I, I think a lot of really good players uh, just want to score and they, they don't have as much interest at the other end. So I think it's great to see these two young ladies really, really take pride in their defense. Question down front. Well, John Finner and again from the South Bend Tribune. Do you, um, whereabouts at the end of the season did you start to feel like, okay, now we're getting our feet underneath us as far as rebounding and we can, we can rebound with other people? I think we were really challenged throughout the season uh, in the ACC, which is just really prepares us so well for the tournament because we're seeing so many great teams. You had Florida State, who was only out-rebounded once all season long, and that was when we did it in the uh, ACC tournament. So I think the rebounding, we faced so many teams throughout the year that this is a great rebounding team. Uh, they're hardly ever out-rebounded, so we really got to do our job. And I think we started to finally take pride in it. It, it took a while, uh, I think late in the season, probably end of February, before we really started to take some pride in the box out and really work a little bit harder on the boards. Coach Al, <laughs> Al SR with the South Bend Tribune. Where are you? Uh, Sorry. Just, just wondering what the impact Natalie Achanla has had on the program this year, how she, the contribution she's been able to make. It's been great having Ace around to just help counsel some of the players, uh, to have her on the bench, to talk to us a little bit from the players' point of view. Uh, we'll talk about some things we're going to do, and, and she'll give some input as to whether that's a good or, or a bad idea or something that they would embrace. So it's been great for me having a little bit of a sounding board, which was very similar to when she was a senior. You know, we talked about a lot of things then, too. Uh, it's funny to watch her. She's incredibly organized and running things, which is not a surprise because of her leadership ability. Uh, but it's, it's been great. It's been great for her to have this uh, experience of being on the bench and being around practice. It's kept her going through the injury because she's just been rehabbing and, and working hard on that. So it's been, I think, a great experience for both of us. Question here in the middle. Charlie Creed from ESPNW. Coach, um, what have you learned about Taya Reimer this year? Taya has been probably the difference in our season, I would say. Um, somewhere around the middle of January, she turned into a, a completely different person, and she has brought an energy and uh, an aggressiveness and a, and a confidence that we really needed. I, I think that our posts were, I, I said in the beginning of the year, I didn't think they were tough enough. And she's the difference. She's the one that really brought out the toughness in the others. She's been a mentor for Catherine and Bree. Uh, she's just added so much experience as just a sophomore. But I think she has really turned the corner, changed her game. Uh, and I think that from, from that point on, I think she's had an All-American type of season. And so we're, we're just so happy that she has uh, kind of found a way to, to lead this team. Question from Doug. Hey, Coach. Doug Feinberg, the AP. I posit a few answers already, but just talk about uh, Natalie Atonwa's growth from what you've seen as what she's done for you as a dobo and such, her growth as a, as a person and such over the last year for you. You know, as a player, Natalie was the most mature player I've ever had from the time she was uh, coming out of high school. She was always somebody that was incredibly organized and knew what was coming months down the road. Uh, and then as a player, the same kind of leadership with the team took care of them. Everybody was always in the right spots. They were on the bus at the right time. They knew where they were supposed to be because of her leadership and her organization. And so those skills in the Dobo job have been tremendous for us. She has organized all the itineraries. She keeps everybody in line. Uh, she's on top of everything. And plus, being a, a former player, I think, can really help the players. She can counsel them on, on some things that... Um, you know, if, if we're hitting a rough patch and she needs to go in and talk to something, talk over some things with them, I think she's a really good listening ear for them uh, to be able to vent some things. And, and she's just been great on the bench. I mean, she's got great ideas initially. She didn't say too much and then finally got comfortable and gave some input in, uh, in what we were doing on the court. So I, I think it's been great. 
really great for us and I think great for her as well.